The Disrupt Education vlog can be found on YouTube. To hear it in podcast form, search Disrupt Education on any of the following podcast platforms. Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Breaker, CastBox, Overcast, Radio Public, Pocket Cast, Spotify, or Stitcher. Welcome to this episode of Disrupt Education. Hey, I wanted to thank you all for hanging out with us. And for you out there in the Rebel Teacher Network, thank you so much. If you want to follow them, hit that hashtag Rebel Teacher Network. Uh, There's a lot going on in education reform. Uh, I have a great guest today, an old student who's making me feel old. Uh, His name is Eddie Hartman, and uh, he's got quite a story, um, a lot of different pivots in life. uh, And I just want to thank you for being here, Eddie. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Super excited. I think love what you do at Rebel, uh, the Rebel Group and, you know, at uh, Hall Pass Education. So super excited to add some value. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's uh, let's start off with like uh, who you are and what, what you're doing right now. And then we'll jump back into the uh, educational path because uh, you've got a diverse one. Yeah, that is true. So uh, as you said, I'm, I'm Eddie Hartman, Edward Hartman the III, uh, to be frank, super proud of that. And I carry that everywhere with me. You know, where you came from is definitely helps determine where you go. Um, Today, I am uh, graduating from a, uh, a boot camp here in Chicago, Evolve Academy for cybersecurity. Uh, very excited about that. Uh, it's, it's truly a circular journey. It, it's where I was when I was in your class. That's what I was pursuing, actually. Uh, so here we are some 12 years later uh, and very excited, very excited to be here. Awesome. Congratulations on that. That's that's quite a feat. When everybody says cybersecurity, it was, it was an interesting thing. Yesterday, I, I literally just got hacked and we found out and we did all that. I'm, I'm intrigued by it, but uh, that wasn't like you you said it was a cycle. So you and I, we were in the uh, small business management class together. We created a shirt as a part of a team. Um, but let's let's jump into that educational path, man. Um, so you, you weren't straight from high school into like, you know, getting your degree and then getting into... Uh, cybersecurity. Um, but you did start there. You had a little bit of history and coding back then. Um, take us down that path. What does that look like? What what? Let's go back into high school and you can even start a freshman year or even before traditional path and then how it got untraditional and where all those pivots came in. Man, yeah. Where do you start, right? I mean, I have to go way back to, to my father, University of Michigan grad, heavy in the computer world from the moment it started. And and he, he knew that'd be a great place to go. Um, whether or not I, I went into the computer world or just learned how to think like a programmer, it's an extremely valuable skill set. And I'm very blessed to have had him know that ahead of time. He had me learning Visual Basic and HTML when I was eight years old, I believe. Um, and I don't remember a thing of it. But what that did was set the path for the rest of it. Um, so I, I actually did start my freshman year in high school at a private school. Um, I had gone to a private grade school. I ended up taking a year off in the middle of high school, which I count as one of the greatest experiences of my life that I don't necessarily recommend. But it was amazing because I started my work journey truly during that time. Um, junior year, I, I came to join OPRF, uh, and that's where I met you. Uh, and you know, definitely still took the Java classes, the web development classes, you know, those types of things. But I, I began to, to sort of question the non-questioning I was doing, right? I was just going forward, doing everything, doing the path. And around senior year, just to break out of the social bubble that is often very small for the, the tech community, I started applying for jobs and ended up getting a job as a dishwasher uh, at a restaurant in local, local park, Marion Street Cheese Market. If you're from the area, you probably know. Uh, and it was the best experiences of my life. It was loud. It was fast. It was it was people. It was conflict. It was It was everything I hadn't got up until that point. Um, being a non-sociable person in a very small private school. My, my eighth grade class had four people graduate from it. So um, definitely behind in that capacity. Um, and I, it totally changed things. I was accepted to University of Illinois at Chicago, started there as a computer science uh, major. And within one semester, I had uh, changed to Triton, took some classes there and ended up eventually graduating from Robert Morris uh, University here in Chicago. Had a chance to play for their hockey team, which was a lot of fun. Worked the entire time went from dishwasher to line cook to server to bar back i mean it was a whole experience um and that was that was hugely valuable and yeah it definitely set me on a different path than i expected that would be uh, in high school 
Let's um let's dig a little bit in. I'm I'm intrigued about that um, that year off in the middle of high school. I think that actually there's more and more people now doing that and or like taking kind of a, a homeschool year or even a gap year like right after they they quote unquote graduate. Um, you started your work path there. Talk talk a little bit about that. That's that's an interesting uh, interesting thing. Um, what happened in that year? Not a lot of good things to start, right? You don't end up missing a year necessarily. Or I dropped out. One might say. Um, and, uh, you know, the typical story, right? Family drama, um, growing pains. We all hit them at different ages. Sometimes you hit it early, sometimes you hit it at 16. And uh, a lot of independence, I had a car. So there's just a lot going on. And, you know, I kind of just, I, I grabbed at my independence and said, I don't want to be here anymore. I want to be somewhere different. And that's casting no dispersions on that school. It's just where I was at the time. Um, my father had had me working from 12 years old with him as a referee in hockey, but it was very casual. We would just kind of go together, ref some games, and uh, it was a great experience there. But at 16, I had a car, I had autonomy, and he made a very clear point. He said, you will spend this year either in school or working. We tried online school, actually, for high school, and very timely experience, right? It was not a good experience. I, I, I didn't show up. You know? So after just ditching that, I worked. Uh, I played hockey, and I worked. And I... Uh, I got to be autonomous at a very young age. Uh, God bless technology, cell phones and all that, but scheduling myself, doing my own taxes, getting 1099s, um, having to pay that first year <laughs> in January. I mean, wow, yeah, talk about, talk about life lessons there. Um, but it was huge. I mean, I was, I was able to, something as trivial as throwing a coach out of a hockey game when he's four times my age and being able to stand there and communicate you know, and have standards. I mean, those things were, were extremely valuable. And I'm blessed to be encouraged to do that. You know, it was, certainly was uh, a lot of the father. Um, yeah, that's that's unique. Um, I think it's less unique now, but it, it, I, I kind of remember, you know, you coming into the school and transferring in. And, you know, we can we can talk about that. Um, how was that? You know, you, you saw uh, four people in your eighth grade course uh, graduate you know, bouncing around to different schools. What, what were some of the struggles there and or the things that, you know, you held dearly that, that really helped you through in those pivots? You know, socially, that, that was the biggest, uh, the biggest challenge. And I, to this day, I, I still support Montessori schools. Uh, I support private schools, homeschooling, alternative options in general. But I, I highly encourage parents to be keenly aware of, is your kid getting bullied in those small environments? Because it's not going to get any better. Uh, and that was my story. I was just viciously bullied almost for eight years. And um, overcoming that into a private school was hard enough when Fenwick was 1,200 people and then getting to OPRF where it was 3,600 people. Um, I remember asking someone in my freshman year who had an interaction with a young lady that was friendly. And I came up to him and said, did you know her before you got here? He said, no, and we just met. And that blew my mind as something that you can do. Uh, and I did not really figure that out until junior year. Uh, you know, I turned 18, so I was a little bit older, the cool kid, and it kind of helped me have something of value that I felt like I could add. Uh, and then just over time, that really, you know, I, I became more comfortable with that. But I will say that, you know, a lot of the easy route is the bad crowd. You know, you fall in with kids that are, for whatever reason, equally off to the side. Um, and the best, on, on, on the good side, I met some people that I'm still friends with today. You know, and I'm very lucky that I didn't go to the bad crowd, right? But I just didn't have a lot of uh, people. So for somebody that's aspiring to network professionally, be a business person, um, I, I, I wish I would have had a kind of a pulse on that earlier on. So I could have worked on it. Um, no regrets, but that is definitely a challenge there. Um, I definitely held on to I was a worker. You know, I, there was definitely something I had money, I had value, whether that's a, a correct place to put your value. It was something that I, I could plant my flag there and say, this is do this and I do this well. When when you went then you were at three different universities, is that what I hear? UIC, Triton, and then Robert Morse, correct? Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, take us down that path because I, I think um your generation um is where it kind of started, right? It was like everybody's going to four year, the push, the push, the push. Um and I have a I have a really good feeling that your generations is a very good pulse now of what to expect in, in colleges and universities. Going from a four year then going to a junior college and then going to Robert Morris. What was that path like? You know, it, it was the continuation of, you want to make your parents proud? 
So I, I think going into UIC, I knew it wasn't going to last. Um, I, I size has always been a thing. I can't escape my four person eighth grade class. You know, so I feel much more comfortable in those small environments. But um, being in a lecture hall of three hundred students was just uh, hot. You know, um, I couldn't get questions answered. I couldn't uh, interact with people or students effectively it was just there was so much going on that despite knowing I didn't want to be there because they didn't have a culinary program even if I wanted to I, I think I would have probably pumped the brakes and found something that would have been a little smaller more accessible um, again great school nothing against it but definitely um, you have you have to be that type of person to go there uh, Triton was a great option because I quickly realized after my first student loan that I did not, not want to pay for four years of that uh, it was heartbreaking, right? Um, so Triton was a great option to kind of get my feet wet. It was also a compromise with the parents. Say, hey, if you really want to do this, prove it. So I was working 40 hours a week. I continued to work 40 hours a week. We did a great semester at Triton, uh, at which point, summer. And we moved right on to Robert Morris. Um, Robert Morris had a hockey team and a great one. So that was really one of the major uh, deciding factors there. Uh, but I definitely still wanted a chance at a full degree, at least an associate. Um, so things like Kendall College certificate programs weren't really up my alley at that point. Now, I'm much more in favor of those things um, with the knowledge I have. But I had a great experience at Robert Morris. It was a nonprofit college with excellent teachers and small classrooms and a lot of options uh, and a fantastic state-of-the-art culinary uh, facility on the top of the floor. That was really, really lovely. Um, so yeah, it was, it was great. And then still having to do the commute downtown and communicate with teachers about my schedule, I, I learned bargaining, you know, how we can explain, listen, I work a lot. What can we do? to make this good for both of us, right? Um, my internship was supposed to be unpaid and I had to argue out of them making me quit my job to go get an unpaid internship, you know? And I think they were confused that this could even happen, right? So it was, uh, it was a lot, but uh, it was a great, great experience. You know, all those different, you know, put my toe in all those waters was huge. Yeah, I mean, uh, and I do remember the, the culinary part. Uh, I, I remember that push from you. For some reason, I just... I don't know if I ran into you uh, at uh, RMU somewhere, or maybe it was the restaurant because they used to have the restaurant there. And interesting, yeah, it was there. It was there. It was so so classic French is a lot of fun. Polenta fries and all that stuff. Um, you know, we we did Oak Park did have a home ec or some sort of cooking class, and uh, we had a lot of y'all teachers coming in snacking on the good things we were making. So <laughs> probably there. Microwave lemon bars or something of that effect. Right, right. Um, and you know, I mean, honestly, in the industries that we we are, I always look right at the food industry because they're so cutthroat. Like you have to move product and all that. And I'm, I'm sure you you learned a lot uh, through that. Um, but in this path, um, you said a couple of things that are very uh, striking. Um, one, you were trying to make the parents proud, right? Like that's there's a lot of pressure, and and parents, uh, I know even as myself as a father, it's it's difficult to allow your kid to explore. The question is then, after you went through all that, after you got the degree, where did you find yourself, and then how did you get from there to where you are now? The the answer to that is a my first solid lesson in networking, right? A, a handshake changes everything. I was at a extra credit because I had a very, very bad attendance policy uh, during college. Don't do that. Show up for class. If you're going to pay for it, be there. Um, it's easier to bargain with the teachers when you show up for class. Um, but I was at a symposium for school where I just met a gentleman named, uh, well, I met a gentleman and I shook his hand and I got a call about five minutes later informing me I was an hour and a half late for my restaurant job. So we had, he had said, you know, meet me. And I just walked right up in the middle of his presentation and slid a note card in front of him with my contact information and said, whatever, it's not going to happen. Uh, prepared to start my next two years for the bachelor's. And he called me up right on the, right outside the train a couple hours later and said, I'd like to hire you. And I, I immediately went to work for him at 21 years old. And we were doing uh, consulting for major, like top 100 food manufacturers. He was sending me all over the country just to talk food. And I don't, I don't know what Angel gave me that experience, but um, again, blessed. Uh, he, he taught me a lot. He made me fake my age at 25 um, when I was 21 and threw me in a lot of positions where it was, again, autonomy and responsibility. Um, and that was a huge first example of you are capable of more than you think you are immediately, right now. Just jump in a bigger pool. Um, the things I learned, <laughs> the skills I used were surprising too. Things like Excel, writing, speaking. I had a culinary degree and to this day I've made 90% of my money with writing, speaking, and Microsoft Excel. 
So, you know, and I got an Excel certification at OPRF. Yeah. That still today, my wife called me today, asked me an Excel question. You know, so yeah, that was really the start. You know, he taught me a lot. He gave me opportunities, and uh, he gave me a shot. Right, he gave me a shot. That's um, we hear a lot from mentors on the podcast, and and the right connections, and and it seems like you you with your your uh your journey you you have you have met a lot of people through just working i can even remember back in class there was always something else i remember you were the referee now that that you brought that up and and there was always something uh more so this is a tough question um and the question is how how do we how do we number one find out in education whether it's in the system or outside the system um where people are and two how do how can we help find them mentors like that and and networking you mentioned networking a couple couple of times let's start with the first question like in your mind and your experiences how how what do you think would be a great way to actually get people uh, to understand young people when they're ready to move forward it is a, a lot of that comes down to the path right you know we don't find out until almost too late that there's more options Right. So, um, and again, not to cast aspersion on anyone, but looking back, the idea that anybody could ask me at 17 what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, I think is false on its face. Um, it's, it's a tough question that has so much baggage based on parents and what's cool and what's nifty. I, I had to this day, the most influential person in my life once told me that if they had accurately answered that question. They would have said, what do you want to be a can of beer or a fast car? Because that's all I'm interested in. And but that's fair, you know? So yeah, to, what you're doing is the big first step, even just laying out those options, a simple pamphlet, uh, a, a business that's willing to come into schools and say, we have internships that are available right now. Grab a broom and walk into a barber shop and just start working, you know, something, anything. Um, encouraging that maybe more work release programs for students starting at a younger age. I was able to get a job at 14 with the Oak Park Park District in a program called Teens in Training. Uh, interview skills, those things. Like, um, I don't know how you necessarily reach kids at because at freshman year they have a lot of programming, but people will flock when there's options available. I was ready in your class for an option. I didn't find it until later. So part of the problem you have is if you don't have almost a you know birdshot type of option to shoot at these kids. A lot of them think, well, I've got Auto, carpentry, home ec, or college. So those are like the only four. I know that's dumbing it down, but they don't necessarily understand. You can intern right out of high school somewhere during high school, summer programs, maybe offer credit, you know, something like that. So um, those are some options, but really just the information. Kids are so curious. They have phones, they're up all night, they never sleep. Give them something better than Twitter or Twitch to, to pay attention to, you know, and, and they will. Confidently, they will. The ones that already will. That's an interesting piece is um, with this ma pandemic right now that we're in and, you know, lo and behold, somebody years away will be hearing this and like, oh, they're talking in the pandemic. Um, the opportunity to network is huge. Not obviously face to face has, has been kind of changed. And I love the fact that you you took a piece of paper. I had a previous student do that too, um, write down their credentials and kind of give it to somebody. I want to I want to talk to this person because there's a youth who's uh, engaged. Um, what are some of the strategies that, that you have learned that you could pass on to younger people about a vertical network? Everybody networks like your friends, you know, and you can, you can end up in good crowds, bad crowds, and that's kind of your horizontal network. But um, what are some strategies that you found that you can pass along to maybe some of the parents of our uh, younger listeners? Remind your face how you feel on the inside is a good one, right? If you're a happy person, look it. Right. And, you know, it, it's an interesting dynamic looking at my camera, looking at me, looking at you right now. But I'm trying to keep a silly smile on my face. Right. You know, you should be the weirdo and jewel that when you lock eyes with someone, you're smiling. You know, and. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I have a feeling that most mentors. Are constantly seeking mentees, not necessarily actively, not trying to turn someone into a mentee. But I've gotten two job offers at the same time, right after holding the door open and smiling and saying, have a good day. Uh, and that is not hyperbole, you know, um, that's honestly it. If you're a kind person and you start with respect, then 
most doors will open, right? You know, I used to tell my dad, I, I used to, or I was unemployed, so I would walk out of the house. I've talked about my dad a lot, right? Um, I would walk out of the house ready for a job interview. I used to say, Bill Gates fell out of a plane and landed in front of me and says, ah, I need a driver. I'm dressed for the part, you know, and whatever that is, there's a lot of people skills. I recommend great books, How to Win Friends and Influence People by uh, Dale Carnegie. Excellent book. It changed my life. I read it in sophomore year. Best book I've ever read. Um, it's starting with kindness. People will notice it. It's uncommon when, when you see that uh, and it immediately sets you apart. Be willing to have a good handshake. You know, it matters. Um, trust the part, be groomed. I mean, these are basic things, but I think those are the most basic things, right? Um, at the end of the day, we can teach skill sets, we can teach competence, but a willing, eager, kind, nice learner. I may not be qualified for a lot of things I've done, but I've been that, you know. Right. I, I really do like that. It's just, you know, in, in our classes now, what I've actually learned from back in the day um, when when you were in school and, in my, you know, I've been teaching for 20 years is it's mindset. We just did a project that was 35 wins, right? The student had to write out 35 wins and just kind of changing the attitude. And um, with that being said, and your experiences in schools, um, this is the big disrupt education question. What one or maybe two things that you would like to see changed in, let's just go with secondary education in the high school four years? Electives can be work immediately. You can work for an elective. Um, there are so many opportunities for high school students to pick up morning jobs. And no, I don't think that's child abuse. You know, I, I had a job before my AP biology class. Um, that alone would make people, young people feel more autonomous about their life. They start to question why I've taken English 12 times and I still don't necessarily read well. So help us maybe do that. You know, I, in my mind, longer periods, more broken up so that you can create those spaces for people. That would be the first step. And that I think we could do right now. I took a Pilates class in college. I know that's not high school, but I paid $2,000 for that class, but I had to take it. It's the only option I had. And I imagine we have similar circumstances in high school where, you know, young people that would love to work for a variety of reasons, whether college or family, they can, and they can get school credit for it and they can explore, you know, and there's businesses all over every community that would love to tap into that for midday help. You name a restaurant that doesn't want, a, you know, a lunch rush help. So, that would be my one right there, honestly. Oh, that's that's wonderful, man. That's I. Let's start a school now, Eddie. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm working on, and uh, I really love that advice. What is next for you? What's what's coming up? So you just have this now. You're ready, uh, and I like to have my guests actually say it out loud so they can actually hear it later and they go for it because I have no doubt that you're going to do some great things in the cybersecurity realm, but what does that look like for you now? You know, um, starting February 1st, I graduate and I immediately start a teacher's assistant position with that company. Um, and that's super exciting. Uh, outside of that, I'm working on my brand. We're going to call it Heartbeat Security or Heartbeat Technology. Uh, and the goal of that initially will be to provide small businesses and nonprofits with with uh, vulnerability assessments that I'm not going to pretend are the best in the world yet. I'm going to get there. But as a method for me to help engage growing businesses that need this help that maybe can't afford it, and nonprofits that just often don't think about that budget. So I'd really like to start engaging with that community just selfishly to help gain experience, but also let, you know, just help people get up to speed um, with that. You know, and long term, I look very much forward to consulting. Uh, I think there's a lot of help that we can do with bringing the extraordinarily smart tech world into the world of people that don't quite understand that. And I think I've been gifted with a dual mind that can speak to both sides of that. And I'm certainly not as smart as a lot of the people in my cohort right now. So, you know, they're, 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 they're. Eddie, I want to thank you so much again for being here, man. I appreciate your story. And uh, uh, I know our listeners got a lot out of it. Thank you so much, Peter. It's been a pleasure. And definitely nice to talk to you again. All right. Thank you all for listening and joining in with us here on Disrupt Education. Until next time. We'll talk to you later.